So just to be clear, am I going to have to protest this interview after we're done? I know. <laughs> <laughs> just want to be absolutely sure because I can get signs made up quick. Yeah, I mean, you can do it. Uh, you know, if it's necessary. I just want to know yeah. ahead of time if I have to go buy supplies. <laughs> so they went all out. They had like styrofoam and magic markers. Well, well, they made a day of it. Yeah, it's like a little... I would have loved, loved to see the arts and crafts session before that. So were you surprised by that? No, they had to bring white markers just to be fair, even though they weren't productive. <laughs> they probably sent a whole thing to Crayola, too, about how they were separating the colors in the box and everything. Well, they wouldn't call them white markers. They'd call them everything. Exactly, yeah. Because it contains all colors, don't you know, Bo? Yeah, you're right. I actually remember in first grade... This was like 1996, 1997. This was in first grade. There was a Crayola crayon called Skin. It was like a pink color. Oh, yes. Well, I, I, I'm a little bit older than you. Yes, I remember that color quite well. And they changed it to Peach. Yes. That, it is, was, so, that is pretty racist. And that was like 97. Well, that was just really to drive up the collector's market. Yeah. <laughs> you should see how much the, the flesh-colored uh, crayons are going for on eBay. I know. There's a the there's a, a whole black market for them now. Yeah, ironically. So were you surprised? I mean, you, you showed up for the show. What, at what point were you aware that there was a protest going on? Um, I was called by some of my guys before, and like, they just tipped me off. Like, hey, go in the back door? They were like, hey, there's going to be a protest. Um, Just to warn you, it's going to be all right. But uh, just give a heads up. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's a good way to treat a protest with uh, yeah. a, a minor level of enthusiasm and uh, dismissal. Yeah, it was good. So, we, were they? Uh, did they try anything more than just? Uh, I mean, they, what they just protested out front, if I understand well, the article a, correctly. Not protest, but a few people snuck in, like a few. Um, I'll go see Bo. Well, they betrayed their cause. Yeah, just some secret. They they broke their silence a little for some creative. Don't go see Bo. Don't go see him. Then walked back out and went. You know he was he was just horrible, and I had to stay for the encore. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to handle all the protests. Win them over by the encore. Yeah. So, so were you uh, shuttled off quickly after that? No, I mean I stayed and I met people. I mean they they had people like come in during the show and like take notes and stuff. So they, I think they were pretty peaceful. So I didn't feel too threatened. Well, now there's been, uh, I don't know if it's happened yet, but what, an entire uh, campus conference about bringing, quote-unquote, people like you in. Yeah, I know, right. Which, which doesn't sound very tolerant. Right, exactly. That's what I was confused about. They're like, don't call, don't judge people, you gay basher. It's like, what? <laughs> well, you know, they're, they're young. They'll learn hypocrisy at some point. Yeah. The uh, So was that the first time you'd ever encountered something to that uh, to that sort of uh, public display extreme? Uh, yeah. Certainly you've seen criticisms in print before. Yeah, but no, that was the first, you know, intense, real life. Like, I had to actually deal with people instead of, like, faceless cyber criticizers. So do you remember what your first criticism was? By my mom. <laughs> and what was her criticism? It's not even funny, it's just dirty. And your response? My response was probably, it was either tears or, eh. Or a combination thereof. Yeah. The tears really came good. first. The eh came later. Yeah. That was when I was first writing songs, and she was probably completely right. And has she changed her opinion somewhat since? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. My songs in the beginning were probably really dirty and not funny. Now, did all of those get uh, released, or there's some of those that you've never... Actually, no, I, I, I like first started. I like wrote like a song a day, and they were like stupid little songs. Do you remember what the first one was? I don't know. Have you since burned it? No, I just don't remember them. I think there was a song like, like it's not gay if you close your eyes. I think that was a song. <laughs> All of these written, I'm sure, from personal experience. Um, yeah, if you're <laughs> sure. I can be sure about anything at this point. Oh, good. This is a completely open-ended interview that'll be free to be reinterpreted and uh, dissected at some point, I'm sure, by somebody who will be doing another interview. This will just build on the legend, the myth. I say we work in the inaccuracies now. Yeah, spread some rumors. 
have some fun. I live once. I make this interview like Wikipedia. Yeah. yeah so what, like, Bo was born Hitler, Burnham. In 1947, due to a rare genetic disorder. And then just pepper in swears. That, that's real Wikipedia. Yes. Well, we, we mustn't forget that uh, you went to a uh, an intensely private college that uh, was only attended by six other people. Oh, yeah. All of whom were intolerant. Who, intolerant or incolorant? I think I could go either way on that. Yeah, colorblind. This is turning into a fascinating, fascinating piece so far. Yeah, I don't even know what's happening. So at, at this point, I mean, what, you're back from the road. Uh, are you uh, fully uh, engrossed in, in writing the film? Uh, a bit. I mean, I do a lot of shows. I still do a lot of shows. I mean, I'm back from the road for a few days. I mean, right now I'm trying to get everything ready for the release. So what's your tour schedule like for the coming months? Um, I'm, in, a, I'm in, in late April, I'm in Australia. Like every week I have a couple shows, like a college show or, you know. Do you find the, uh, the grind setting in or are you still, uh, excited about being on the road? No, it's all good. I like it. It's not like eight shows a week, so it's still exciting. Have there been any low points where you just wanted to get back home and get off the road? No, no. I, I mean, I really have had a lot of fun. What do you say at this point has been, uh, your best show? Um, at this show. And how would you define that? I don't know. I don't know if I would define it. I don't know if I've ever thought of anything as my best show. I mean, I've had a lot of fun in, in specific places, but I don't know the shows themselves. I really like because well, they're all, they're all different, you know? I know that sounds really like hack and like, eh, but I don't know. Well, what do you say has been the, uh, the most interesting response you've gotten from an audience at this point? Well, the protest, definitely. Just because it was different? Yeah. Now, do you, have you found that, you know, tra traveling, there's, there's been an audience that's been tougher to win over? Uh, I mean, the, the, the comedy club crowds are tougher because, you know, they're usually older. And, uh, you know, I mean, college, college crowds are much easier because, for the most part, the college kids don't pay, so they just want to laugh. Whereas, the, like, the old people pay, like, 20 bucks and are like, make me laugh. Yeah, you're fighting the cover charge. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I bought two drinks, made me laugh. So is there any point where you, you got where you haven't made them laugh? Have you had that uh, bad experience yet? I'm uh, not like a huge, huge bomb bombing. You know, I, have, I haven't had great shows. Now, can you feel that up on the stage, or do you assess that afterwards? I can feel it on stage. I can feel it on stage. But like, you know, with the music, I can kind of have fun with it and just keep going. Was it different, obviously, moving into the stand-up portion of working out that uh, the portion of the act? Yeah, I mean, I, I was able just to pepper them in in between songs, and if anything failed, I could always, like, you know, get the momentum back with a song. So it wasn't too bad, but it's been fun. I mean, I want to make much more of my act stand-up, and I'm going to get off the, I'm going to get off the, like, the little kid with the, you know, the, the kid playing songs really quickly. Do you feel that uh, that's become somewhat limiting, or do you feel it could be limiting in the future? Um, well, I mean, it's just not even limiting. I don't even care about you know, what it does for a career or anything. I'm just going to get bored. I, I can already tell I'm getting bored with it. Was there a point where you reached that sort of boredom threshold where you went, yeah, okay, enough of this? No, not yet, because if I did, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing it still. But you can tell it's, it's fast approaching. Well, I can just tell that, like, I, want, I, wanted, I, I, I will want to do something else. I, I won't want to do this for, you know, like five years. There's a portion of the audience that obviously was was first exposed to you through the internet videos and probably come in expecting just the greatest hits. Can you discern that segment of the audience from those who have never seen you before? I mean, I can tell people that are you know know the joke that's coming as opposed to those who don't. But um, no, I don't know. I don't try to do too much analyzing on stage. You know, I just kind of try to go up and just you know do do whatever comes. You know, do what do what I do and just have fun. Now, how often have you uh, played the same venue at this point? Has it pretty much been a new a new venue every time out, or are you starting to repeat? Yeah, I don't think I've repeated yet. Well, I mean, I've played like a few little sets, like the LA Improv. But I have. I don't think I've had. I haven't headlined anything twice. Now, how often would you say that you've been introducing new material in? Well, not much because all my new material right now is going to the to the movie. You mean introducing new material to the audience? Yes. I mean, obviously, if you're going back to you know a, a venue multiple times, you're going to run the risk of having repeat audiences. Yeah, I, I haven't. I think I've been around enough where it's new material almost like a, a large, large proportion of the time. And the only time it's a repeat material is people that came out to see me knowing my material already. You know, 
And certainly you've reached the point now with the uh, the CD and the DVD being released that is a permanent document of that material. So people will have experienced it for the most part if they're going in to see your show because of it. They've already seen that material. Right, right, right. Was there any material that uh, you've retired from doing live that you did er in early on that you just you, you don't feel like doing anymore? There's material on YouTube that I don't do live because I don't think it's funny. What's the biggest example of that? Well, like people, one that like, people were like, like 3.1 for apple pie. Well, I think I just think I mean it, it might have worked when I was like 16, but like the whole white rapper thing is really hacky and like. I don't like it that the reason it's funny is because I'm white. Because my later raps, the reason they're funny is just because I think they're funny, you know? Right, it's it's, it's more dependent on wordplay than it is on just the juxtaposition. Right, right. Because I think that juxtaposition, that you know, and that, uh, I mean, that's just so, it's done so many times. Then later I was like, hey, how, wouldn't it be great if I could just make a rap that's funny just because it is funny and clever? No, I don't do that. I don't do that when it's on live. You've obviously played England uh, a bit. Uh, will this be the first time you're going to Australia? Yeah, I'm really excited. Hopefully crossing paths with uh, Tim Minchin while you're out there. Yeah, I think I did like an interview with him. And now is this uh, a festival you're going to, or is this just a series of dates? No, it's the festival, the Melbourne Comedy Festival. What's the release like on the, the CD DVD? Is it only available in the U.S. at this point? It's uh, I don't know how that works. But it'll be, it's on Tuesday, so it's March 10th. So obviously if they want it, if they're overseas, they can always get it through Amazon and just get it imported. Yeah, I think you come see me and I'll have a bunch of CDs with me. Now, do you have an official site set up with the uh, with the tour dates? Um, yeah, it's going, I mean, right now my site's horrible. But it's just about to be relaunched as a better site within the next couple of days. So, I mean, BoBurnham.com. So hopefully by the time they listen to this. Or they could always follow you on Twitter, I suppose. Oh, yeah. And MySpace, oh, yeah. That's that's where it's at nowadays. I'm, I'm ahead of the curb. Yes, yes. And it uh, looks like you're a frequent updater of your Twitter. I am. It's addicting. Uh, who is it the uh, that hooked you? It's almost like a vampirism thing. Right. Well, the thing is, all the comedians were doing it. And I was like, okay. And I noticed that all the comedians were doing it. Because it's just a perfect thing for comedians just to be able to update everybody instantaneously and on short notice about your shows or anything. Right. I think it's just like the perfect way to keep in touch with people. And it's a very good thing, you know, particularly if you have a tour coming up and you're going to be doing signings for a new DVD release or CD DVD release, and you can let people know when that's happening. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. So have you gotten into the just uh, random foolish musings portion of it yet? Well, see, you need to put that in order to legitimize and not look self-promoting. But now I've actually started doing it just to do it. Now, when was the, uh, when did you sign up? How long ago was it? Hmm, let me look. Well, first, I, first, like, I have like 194 updates or something right now, and my first updates were a fake person impersonating me. Oh, wonderful. But, yeah, I, I probably did started doing it a couple months ago, and then, like, I really, really started doing it, like, a couple weeks ago. And so now, now do you normally do it from the web, or do you do it from your phone? Uh, usually from my phone. Do you worry about uh, overdosing on Twitter? You know, it always can happen. It's a very slippery slope. It is slippery. Looks like you're gaining in followers. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm nowhere near who's, who's big on this. Dane Cook or Russell Brand. That you know, also helps to get a strategic plug from someone else like Russell did. I mean, Russell obviously had uh, Jonathan Ross plug him, and Jonathan Ross has a huge following. So oh, does he? It's about strategic plugging for Twitter. So let's say, you know, I were to plug you on mine and a portion of mine have no idea who you are. Then they find out from the Twitter and you gain that audience. Nice. What What is yours? Uh, mine is Unka Scrooge McD. I, know, I found your. I got yours. I got yours. All right. Now look at this. We'll go all up. Oh, up there right now. This is so incestuous. Scrooge McD. Honestly, this is the most interesting part of the interview for me. I know. It's so boring. I'm updating my Twitter right now. I roll. Well, I've just updated as well. Fantastic. Well, now hopefully my quote-unquote celebrity friends will follow you as well. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They, uh, through Twitter, Dane Cook and I had like a bromance last night. Oh, really? So what, <laughs> now how, would you, how would you define a Twitter bromance? Nothing. He was like, 
yo, I'm, yo, BB, I'm working on a song. We should get Diddy to produce. And I was like, yeah, if he has time between making the band scenes 23 and 24. It was like, it's a song called whatever. It's from a rock opera. And I was sort of talking to him, just assuming it was an imposter, you know? Just assuming it was a fake Dane Cook. And at what point, I mean, that's that's the other thing about Twitter is now that whole whole cottage thing that's now sprung up of how do you verify yourself? Right, but then I went on, you know, like Dane Cook's MySpace, like, which was where he made his, you know, everything. Right. And, and he had a blog on there, like, follow me on Twitter, and I clicked it, and it was that. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, suddenly I need to address him. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Cook. What is the writing process for you at this point? Because obviously you've been doing a lot, a lot of writing for the... Uh, the film for Universal. So you've been, I'm assuming, it doing it more than than you have in the recent past, even as far as being forcing yourself to do it. Yeah, but I enjoy it. So I just to get up. I sit at the piano for a long time. How quickly does the inspiration come at this point? Well, the inspiration is a little bit easier because I don't have to take a thin air. Like we know the plot, and we know what songs we want to have in there. But and the writing of the it's hard to me. It takes a while. How would you describe sort of the evolution if you were to compare a song that you wrote a year ago? to what you're writing now? Um, I don't know. I guess I just try to make it more dense and more like have a little bit more emotional or dramatic integrity. Not anything real serious, but, uh, you know, I just want to make it a little bit more layered. Well, no, I, I think that's sort of uh, underselling the idea that uh, something that someone can see is, you know, funny or flippant can have a lot of thought behind it. I mean, that's the nature of constructing comedy. Right, right. Uh, I mean, do you feel that uh, there's been a segment of the audience that sort of has uh, not appreciated the sort of the uh, the work that goes into it? Yeah, I mean, there's certain material that I think warrants some dismissing, but uh, I don't think the way I write now does. But, uh, people always will, and who cares, you know? But at this point, I mean, you, you've already said that, you know, a lot of the stuff you've dismissed yourself and no longer perform it. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's stand-up as an example, you know, but there's a very select group of stand-ups that also incorporate music in, and it seems like there's been a recent resurgence of that with people like Tim Minchin and uh, Sarah Silverman doing it. It sort of puts you in a unique position to bring both of those things into the act. Right. To bring music and comedy? Yes. Yeah. Do you feel that... uh, that in some ways, I mean, you you talked about you can sort of go into a song to win an audience back after a stand-up portion. Do you feel that yeah. could be a crutch for the material, for uh, the stand-up material not being as strong as it could be? Yeah, well, just in the sense that if I'm working out material, you know, like if I'm working out brand new stand-up material, I can do it at any point in my act and know that I won't lose momentum if it bombs. A lot of comics do that, except instead of songs, they have their strongest stand-up jokes to do it with, you know. Right. At, at this point, have you done a uh, any gig that was pure stand-up without the music? I did one for like five minutes. And what was the experience like? Good. It was fun. It was it was very light. I felt light and unburdened. Just so easy. You can just wander up there and just talk. I don't have to worry about all this other shit. Yeah, whether, whether someone brought your piano. Like, I have to like worry about, you know, just like, so much easier. So uh, do you foresee a point when you might transition the music completely out of the act? Yeah, you know, a little bit. I mean, right now I see the next phase or like the next thing that I would like to do is to do like my next, you know, like my next hour of material will be more of like a one man show rather than like a music act or a stand up act. You know, sort of like, you know, a little bit of stand up, like a little bit of some songs, maybe like an opening number and like maybe some like monologues and poems and stuff. Now, did the, the, the full shoot for the Comedy Central special, did that originally have some stand-up in it? Uh, a little bit. Not much. I mean, that was... When they shot the Comedy Central special, that was in August, and that was when I really hadn't done my set a lot many times. I probably had only done my set, like... I mean, I probably only done, like, a... I probably done a half-an-hour set under ten times when I had done that. So doing it now would be a completely different special. Yeah, yeah. Just the attitude of it, but I, I I was happy with the way the session came out. Now, were there any uh, discussions with Comedy Central for doing a follow-up special? No, but I mean, I guess that would be the next step, like, you know, if, if if things go well. And what would be the direction you'd want to take that in? Yeah, I'd want to make it like, if it was an hour-long special, I'd want to make it, I want them to be like, you know, I don't know, I, just, I would just want to have fun with it. 
I did theater for so long, so I've always wanted to do sort of like a one a funny one man show. Would you see it as just a a series of monologues? Or would you like to have a an arc to your one man show? Uh, yeah, well, like maybe like an arc, maybe an arc to Bo, the you know, like to the performer that's on stage, you know, maybe like a little bit like I don't know, it was like a little postmodern like an arc to the actual guy doing the one man show. You know what I'm saying? Right. But yeah, I mean, I want to do like maybe like some like I like an opening number, like a real opening number. And like, you know, some songs and like, you know, some monologues and then just some stand up. I mean, what would you say right now is, is your comedic influences? If you were to, to point to sort of the amalgam you're looking for, what, what kind of uh, performers are you looking at, at pulling that sort of vibe from? Oh, oh for the one man show? Yeah. Or just personally. I mean, you know, the, the humor that you gravitate okay. towards. Like, uh, I guess Steve Martin. Obviously another performer who got up, did his thing, and, and really wasn't terribly concerned if the audience was following him at first. Yeah, right, right, exactly. You know, he did, like, balloon animals and banjo and, like, all that stuff. And, I mean, and that he was just very clearly getting up there and doing what he liked to do. I mean, he liked to do magic when he was young, so he got up and did magic. And I think people could see that, and that's what really appealed to them, apart from him being brilliantly funny. Well, the music, you didn't pick up the music until, what, your... your junior year or prior to your junior year in, in high school so it, the music thing is not really a, a an old thing with you right right but like i've done theater for so long and like i like i you know i just like to i'd like to do something you know i just want to I, I, I just want my act to change because i have that i have that young i don't literally have it but i have young add in the sense of like you know i i, I, don't, I don't feel like i could stay in one place or do one act for a long time so to this point what has been the greatest role you performed great role Ones I liked the most, I played Dionysus and the Bacchae, like that. You had an incredibly advanced high school experience. It was. We had a really good theater program. Is there any role that you regret not getting? Oh, am I, any, am I resentful? I don't think so. It must have been one you walked away and went, you know, I'm, I'm better than him. Well, I don't think so. I don't think in one of these publications that probably every member of my high school could possibly read. <laughs> so in other words, the answer is yes. You're just not willing to divulge it. Yeah, well, maybe think I learned probably in high school, but I probably think you'll never see those people again. You might as well say it. Um, I don't think so. Well, someday, ten years from now, you'll be doing an interview, and someone will ask you that, and you go, "There was this role I wanted. This little bastard got it." Absolutely, absolutely. He's uh, he's selling insurance now. So you deferred your NYU, yep. an excellent school. I went to NYU. Definitely not a place to live if you don't have money, but you won't have that issue. <laughs> yeah. Do you still well, f fully intend to go next year, or do you feel that that might get pushed off further? No, I deferred again. I mean, how do you view college? Because obviously, I mean, I mean, the career very well may take off, and you never look back. Yeah. Well, everyone in general nowadays like makes it look like college is like the American dream, but it's just not right for some people. I guess it really depends on, on what you think you're going to get out of it. I mean, most people go to college to experience, A, getting out of the house, uh, right. B, meeting new people and having life experiences, and certainly you're accomplishing that without college. And as far as the classes go, like, I'm, I've learned so much already, you know. I don't need, like, a Western Civ class. I learned, like, you know, oh, Alexander the Great is bisexual. Yes, thank you for telling me that for thirty thousand a year. Or how much is it now? It was thirty thousand when I was there, and that was a while ago. I can oh, only imagine. Shit. It's 50. how much? Fifty? Yeah, with including room and board. Fifty thousand to learn that he was bisexual? Yeah, oh, I don't yeah. think I don't think you need to go. I mean maybe to learn that maybe to see pictures of Socrates with his being bisexual. That might be worth it. But... Yes, which I hear is housed within the bisexual collection of the NYU library. Yeah, and that's actually the biggest library at NYU. No, oh, it, it's it's but it's it's only you're only granted access by a certain professor and only on weekends. Right. Well, you, you know, I guess you'll have to uh, just give up the dream of seeing that library for I, I guess success. Yeah, that's all good. It's a trade-off at the end of the day. I just do what makes me happy and what I think is fun. And right now I'm having fun, so I just won't stop. What's the status of the film at this point? You know, I guess you pitch it and all that um, after it's finished, and we'll be finished for a little while after the script. And you've got what, the first draft done? Yeah. Now, who are you working with? Are you working with Universal directly on that? Would, you, would Judd directly on that? Or who's your point of contact? Uh, as as... Who 
ever dread. I mean, I'm writing this. I'm writing the music by myself and the script with my friend. And you still describe it as sort of the uh, the anti high school musical. Yeah, yeah. And are you going to be releasing it in 3D? Hopefully. Oh yeah, hopefully. Now, is the intention also that uh, that not only uh, writing it? Have you uh, determined what part you'll be playing in it? Well, the main character's name is Bo, so hopefully I'll get that wrong. I don't know. It might go to that that kid who whose name you won't divulge from high school who took the role you always wanted. No, that might be the role I always lost. There you go. Huh. <laughs> yes, you lost it to Chris Men's Plus. Oh Jesus! <laughs> and I'll do that. He's on Twitter too. Now he'll be disappointed. Now you've just upset him. He'll be crying now. No, he's a good guy. I like him. But you don't want him he's playing Bo. Real. He like just like he is a high school kid. Well, he'll he'll be your sidekick, or he could be Bo. You know, I'm just thinking. I don't want it. I don't think he'll be able to pull off the song. I don't know. Kid's talented. I'd watch out. No. Well, now you're going to have to do a quick rewrite and start calling the kid Chris. Every single, every single thing I audition for, if I'm ever in L.A., Chris Furman's plus kid. He's like a, sort of like a demon. So why don't you have a throwdown with him on Twitter? Call him out on it. Say just for once, can he not show up on an audition? You know, I could do that. That's what Twitter was invented for, honestly. It was just public throwdowns. It would be an incredible fight, like a physical fight between me and him. I think you could sell tickets to that. It would look like two baby giraffes trying to fuck. People will talk about it for years to come. Mm. Well, now, now, obviously, I've sparked something, and I'm going to regret it later. You sparked what? Some kind of, you know, naked baby giraffe fuck fight between you two. Oh, yeah, well, that's been long in the making. We just, uh, a good look, guess what I'm following you on? I just found him following him on Twitter now. Winner gets to uh, play Bo. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, I don't know what I've done. No, he is a funny dude. I like him. I know. Well, now you're just saying it for the interview. No, I really liked him in Role Models. Oh, I thought he was fantastic in Role Models. And what's great, it was it was a character that uh, that showed he was an actor uh, and not just playing himself in Superbad. Right, you, exactly. That's what I think people thought. And I saw him in Role Models. I was like, oh, look at that. Yeah, I was just watching the, uh, the, the advanced DVD. So that comes out, interestingly enough, on the 10th as well. Man, we should just all, we should just plug shit. We should just jerk people off in our interview. Yeah. Well, we'll mention them on Twitter. We'll get them followers. We'll get their products sold. Anything else you want to plug? Any anyone else that's doing anything that's you know in addition to your album dropping on three ten? Uh, my father owns Burn Construction, a local construction company. Oh, really? Do they do uh, uh, local, uh, like residential or industrial? I think so. If you want to have anyone build you a house in the local area, it's BCCI, Burnham Construction Company Incorporated. Now, does he have an album dropping? Uh, yeah, it's the track made of buzz saws and people screaming, fucking thing. Yeah, well, I can't wait to see his first protest. Yeah, that's more of like a that's more of like a workers' labor picket line. It's good, you know, you're keeping it in a family way. It's good that you were able to plug that for him. Now you just get him on Twitter, and we'll be done. I'm not entirely sure what the interviews accomplished, other than to tell people that the album is coming out on 310. And the special's coming out on 327. So a 2-4. So, uh, and they can get it, it obviously, yeah. from... You want to watch the special early, buy the CD. Yes, which has a bonus DVD of the special. And if you want one wish to come true, buy two CDs. Oh, if you want two wishes to come true. Buy four CDs. We could go on for about an hour like this. We probably shouldn't. So at the end of the day, really, all you want is people to buy the, the CD. I don't want people to like me. I don't want people to be happy. I don't want people to get along. I just want people to like me. Well, it's good. I mean, you set your like your expectations mm-hmm. low enough. I don't even want food. I don't want to find a wife. I don't want to be happy. I don't want to have kids one day. I don't want to. I don't want to make a difference in the world. All I want is just to sell CD. Well, you know, with expectations like that, I can guarantee you'll be a very unhappy man, but with money. Hey, there you go. And at the end of the day, what more do you need? Right. I don't even care if a wealthy businessman just buys them off. All I want is just to sell the CD. That's all I need. And people should follow you on Twitter to find out. Actually, strike that. I don't even care if I follow the CD. All I want is like 5,000 followers on Twitter and then I can die. That's all I need. We can get you that. We'll get you that by, by uh, at least by the time this runs. Maybe not. Maybe later than that. I should not make promises. All right, to be honest, entire interview has made me question what I want entirely, and I don't even know what I want anymore. 
for, well, this has been preparatory for you for the next interview when someone asks you something pseudo profound. And now I think I want power. You can't change. Yeah, but I can always try to be bisexual and then maybe become really powerful and really rich. Well, you know what? You could have found out how to do that if you'd gone to NYU and gone to the library. Exactly. Now you're regretting that college decision, aren't you? It's sort of it's sort of chicken and egg. Like did Alexander the Great become bisexual because he was rich and powerful, or was he bisexual and then because of that was able to relate to everybody and just conquered the world? Well, if you have a kingdom that big, you want to keep your options open. I would assume. Right. I mean, why limit yourself to only one half of the people you rule? Yeah. Oh, Macedonia. <laughs> This is good. We we should look for a, a clever way out of this interview. <laughs> yeah, I don't even, you even say, like, I heard a gunshot and then the phone went off. We could do that. We'll put a sound effect in. Well, it doesn't work if you do it verbally. I wish we could. I wish there was something called Twitter side. I wish you could kill people on Twitter. I'm sure you could shame them on Twitter. Yeah, but I don't want to do that. And if you can throw sheep on Facebook, surely you can shame people on Twitter. This interview has been insane. Oof. Was it everything you were expecting and less? Oh, yeah. You know, I don't... Did you have any expectations for the interview? I just I expected this to be my ticket out of this town, and I think it's going to be. Well, we can accomplish a lot of things, but we can't book tickets. Well, that's fine. I hope I haven't I mean, disappointed you on that. I'm not like a figure to ticket. I could try, but, you know, we're no Expedia. Well, like a lot of tickets. I could do that. What would I do? PayPal you a dollar? They publish this in Braille as well. Uh, probably not. We can tell people to spill something on a desk and just feel around for a bit while they're listening to it. <laughs> maybe, maybe, could you, could you reduce this whole article to maybe a few words? I think we could just say Bo could not be reached for comment. There you go. By the way, the album comes out on 310. Right. Is that good enough? 310, motherfuckers. <laughs> I'll say, how can we not keep that in the interview? So they won't be reading this. They'll be listening to this. This is a podcast interview. This is a podcast interview? Oh, yes. Oh, shit. That sort of elevates the whole thing now, doesn't it? It does. Or increases somebody's disappointment. Yeah. Well, this is going to be, this is exciting. Yeah. I don't even remember what I said. That's good. Neither do I. It's probably the best way. We just forget this thing ever happened. Mm, what was your last podcast? Last one was with Tim Minchin. Oh, shit. Really? Yeah. Did about uh, an hour and a half with Tim. Uh, nice in-depth piece. Oh my God. See, you didn't, I didn't even let you get in-depth. I have like, a very harsh shell around me. Well, see, obviously someone miscommunicated to you what the interview was intending to be and failed at. What was it intending to be? I have no idea anymore. Probably something in-depth. But instead, we went nicely surreal, so I'm fine with it. Yeah, but it's hard to be in-depth when someone is so shallow. Oh, trust me. We can find depth. We'll create depth. I heard you were raised in the slums of Boston. Yeah. A feral lad. You taught yourself to play piano at a broken down flop house. Yeah. And you I was blocked. Spent your, your days and nights stealing around town with your monkey sidekick. Might be mixing up your story. And then I was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in every question of my life. It all makes sense now. Really does say that there's there's the depth we need it. <laughs> now, if your music can be as good as that, oh, it is. Might be Oscar in your future. I, I tried to sue them because for copyright infringement. Unfortunately, the extent of your lawsuit was sending a Twitter direct message. Right. It was like, yo, you stole my life. And the guy wrote back and said, I I'm Indian, but I had nothing to do with that. Right, because I wanted to do a movie. Sort of, I already had written a script. It was sort of like some dumb millionaire. Except instead of what's the millionaire, it was ten thousand dollar pyramid. I would have watched that. So like, and all the words they were guessing, like, were exact things from my life. It was and like, the... okay, this is what you do at Christmas. This is what you, oh, get raped by your grandfather. Oh, wait a second. But the great thing was you were playing opposite Betty White. Right. That would have made the, the movie. And then the movie found out the host was a bad guy. And you pulled Dick Clark out of retirement to play himself. Oh yeah. A little awkward. What with the the stroke and all, but still, it's better to have dick than to not have dick. Yeah. I probably should have thought about that sentence before I said it. Right. And the movie was called The Stroke of Genius. Oh. I'm sold. There you go. So that's one ticket. Probably the only ticket. Oh, good. Let's take it out of here. You know what? It all comes back to that, doesn't it? 
podcast. It's peppered with motifs. It is. No, there's there's a through line. This has been this is what your one man show will eventually become, but funnier and faster. Oh man. Oh, and just so you know for people listening, my throat hurts, that's why I sound so that's why I sound that's why I sound like Batman. No, you you're more intelligible than Batman at this point. Where is she? Where's Dent? I love that. I did anyone tell him what the voice was? Well, I guess you really can't tell him anything considering what anger management issues he has. I'm sure they would have if they didn't know he was a screamer. Shut the fucking shit, you prick. No, 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 no. Don't just be sorry. Think for one fucking second. You can see him channeling some of the some of the New York attitudes of the newsies. What was great about it was even you know yelling like that, he couldn't maintain a solid accent. Right, I know. You could see some whalish slipping back in. It was nice. You need to eventually have a blow-up like that. Oh, I'll have one. I'll have a better one, though. Maybe when you go at Chris Men's Plus. Yeah, well, you want to throw down. I'm good. We'll see if he follows you on Twitter. That'll be the ultimate challenge. Everyone who's, who's listening to this, check and see if Chris Men's Plus is following Bo Burnham on Twitter. Then you'll know if it's on. Is this live? No. No, this will, this will, be, this will be heavily edited. Oh, you have to beep it out? No, no, no. Clear up all the gaps. What gaps? Oh, there's a uh, lag in Skype. I'll tell you, in, in the future, if we ever do a follow-up interview, God forbid, we probably should both be on the same type of phone line. Well, what do you, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think there will be, but if we ever do another interview, by that time, you know, we'll be ruled by some robotic overlord, and there will be no one type of phone line. How many types of phone lines are there now? Like 12,000? Oh, easily. It doubles every couple of years. It's like microchips. Yeah, I don't believe in that microchips. I'm a Christian. Oh, I don't believe in me, so I think that's uh, equal footing. You believe in you? No. No, my people do. It's good. We got false deep. See, there was you said it was going to be shallow. It got deep. No, no, I'm going to be shallow. Well, hopefully, when this <laughs> when it runs, most likely uh, tonight or tomorrow, you'll be fine with how it all came out. Oh, I'm I'm sure I won't be. I'm all be sure. I I may never recover. Little part of me hopes you don't. Just so you'll always remember this moment. Did I ever? Did, did I use? I can't remember. Did I use the N word? No, but we can insert that at any point. Maybe like an Easter egg. Okay, I, okay. I just wanted to make sure. Well, now you can finish that song using it. Tim Minster has a funny song about that. Have you heard his song? Yes. Good one. His new album drops in the next week or so. Yeah, I know, and I, I won't be able to get it. Probably. No, what? Because it'll be uh, UK iTunes. Well, you don't want to be sullied by the work of another. I think we should probably uh, wrap things up so you can get back to your day. Oh, I, 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 my day is done. Really? Have I completely shot the entire day? I've ruined it, haven't I? Well, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like the entire way of the world has been dropped on you. Well, it has in many ways. Just because I've created an interview with such artistic integrity and you are stuck with the burden of having to cut it. I know. Well, you know, there's no good way to do that. And it's a burden that I'll live with for the rest of my life. And I'll I'll have to live with those choices. You get to walk on and do better interviews in the future. This is my cross to bear. Well, good luck. Well, you know, I thank you and I, I wish you only the best. Do you? Some part of me does, mostly. A bit. Don't press me on it, though. All right. I might pick a Twitter fight with you. You certainly can bring it. I'll get Chris Platts backing me up. Oh well, that might be. He's a fighter. Well, I could get um, I could get someone pretending to be Dane Cook. Yeah, well, I'll get uh, Tim Minchin to back me up. You won't. I certainly could. I probably he probably won't, but I certainly could. Oh damn it! Don't make me call out my pansy brigade. Your what brigade? My pansy brigade. See, I don't believe you. I think you're bluffing. I guess you won't know until you try. The move is yours, Bo. Once again, why we should not judge Alexander the Great. Well, see, now you know why he was by. Never limit your army. Outside the interview, hopefully you you, uh, you keep in touch and let us know or let me know what's going on. You know, I don't really care. You don't have to. You don't have to really fucking know. I don't know. You don't really. Really? You're you're a big man. No, I mean I really I really don't I like I'm just getting so annoyed with having to 
like pour myself out with this album. So it'd be nice to just have a actual personal, maybe just two dudes talking rather than like two du- one dude using another dude to plug himself. Now that sounded like Alexander the Great. It did, but I'm perfectly fine with that. That's completely your call. I'm not the celebrity. No, maybe we could. I'm not the celebrity either. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're on that level playing field, oh, you know, shit, wait. You know, you're not the celebrity. Wait a fuck. Why are we interview? What what's the interview for? I thought you were interviewing me. Is this just two regular people talking? America doesn't care about this shit. No, no, half of me didn't either. Ooh. No, don't worry. It's all on my side. You were fine. Oh, good. You're a celebrity on your own site. They just want to hear you talk to regular people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'm sure I'm a celebrity. Yeah, I got followers. See? I got more followers than some people that have less followers. That's just a numerical thing. How about if I get on a regular phone line and we just consider the interview over? The interview is over? I'm I'm sorry. It could be better next time. The world is, my world's crashing around me. Uh, You know, there'll be other interviews. At other times with other people, you'll have other interviews. Right, but I was supposed to be better than Tim Minchin. I don't think you could ever be better than Tim Minchin, but that's not how you should measure yourself, Bo. I know, but I was supposed to be like, in the interview, I was supposed to be edgier. People were supposed to think that, like, maybe I was standing on the edge of a building or something. Well, come out with some startling revelation or insult. I have neither. Well, we can always pretend. They don't need to know that's why well, I, I, other than the fact they just said it. Let's let's say that what you're about to say is well, it is completely accurate. My album's coming out March 10th. That'll fuck people's shit up. There you go. <laughs> <laughs>